You know, this is not just a passing of a politician. This is a person who is in the very fiber of New Jersey. He came from humble beginnings in the town I've lived in all my life, Patterson, New Jersey. He never forgot it, never turned his back on his town, never, for, never turned his back on his roots, ever, ever, ever. Loved his mom and dad. His father died very early in his early 40s. He, Frank worked his way, never got, ne wasn't certainly born with a silver spoon, never acted it. And that was Congressman Bill Pascrell remembering the late senator. And for more, we're very pleased to be joined by another colleague from the New Jersey delegation, Congressman Rush Holt. Congressman, thank you for a few minutes on what I understand is got to be a very difficult day. Um, if there's one enduring image uh, that you have of the late senator, what would it be? You know, it was his colleagues say the other senators saying, oh, here comes Frank to twist my arm again. <laughs> uh, you know, whether it was, you know, smoking on airplanes or some New Jersey construction project uh, or rail safety, uh, he was relentless. And, you know, if he thought this was in the public interest, he would fight for it. And his colleagues knew it. They liked that about him. Uh, so it was, you know, it was with admiration they would say, oh, here comes Frank again to twist my arm. Uh, that's what I remember most about him. You know, he liked to say uh, he was a fighter, and he was, for the common guy, for the common good. Uh, but what I'll remember most uh, about his legislative record is when he worked on transportation, he put in some language about blood alcohol level and did more to cut down on drunk driving than any other single person in America. And there are, you could fill stadiums you could fill entire football stadiums several times over with people who are alive today because of Frank Lautenberg. And the interesting thing is, of course, they don't even know who they are. Finally, Congressman, uh, it was no secret he didn't like the way that the process uh, worked at the end where the decision was in some ways taken from him uh, to run for re-election. Governor Chris has got an interesting choice ahead of him as who will fill out the balance of the term if he called on you and said, Congressman, do you have a name for me? Uh, who should fill out the balance of Senator Lattenberg's term? What name would you give him? <laughs> well, there are a number of us who are interested. And, uh, you know, this is not the time to talk about that. Uh, Frank uh, has left a, a, an important legacy. Uh, we should uh, honor that legacy. We should point to that legacy. Uh, we should continue that legacy. And uh, it's, uh, it's been a legacy that's been good for New Jerseyans, it's been good for Americans. Um, and uh, it's just sad to think that Frank uh, himself won't be continuing it. And we'll leave it on that note. Congressman Rushhold, thank you very much for a few minutes. I appreciate it. Thank you. Now, as we look ahead to the coming days, questions have arisen already about who will fill the very shoes here that Senator Lattenberg leaves behind. And believe it or not, it is not clear. Now, there are actually two competing state laws in the books, and the final decision may very well end up in the hands of the New Jersey State Supreme Court. Now, one of the laws sets out a path. If a Senate vacancy happens 70 plus days before the next general election, as is the case with the passing of Senator Lattenberg, under that law, Governor Christie can appoint a temporary replacement if he chooses to, and voters would pick a new senator this coming November with primaries to be set sometime before then. The second law, it covers vacancies 70 days before the next primary election. Primary day tomorrow, so under this law, Governor Christie could again pick a temporary senator if he chooses to in the election for that seat. It would be in November of 2014 with primary set a year from now. Finally, both laws appear to indicate that the governor can call a special election anytime he wants here between now and November of next year. If he does, special election would most likely be this coming November. And again, the governor can also appoint a temporary senator till the date of that special election. Confused already? Well, you're not alone. Now, for more on the political impact of the passing of Senator Lattenberg, we're joined by Daryl Isherwood, editor of Politicker NJ, and a guy who knows politics in New Jersey as well as anyone I know. Daryl, thank you very much for a few minutes. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Richard. Well, before we get into all the machinations, I was saying to some folks here, especially I'd say in the last three or four years, um, 
I think maybe one of the worst jobs was being the press sec that had to travel with Senator Lautenberg because, as you know, he'd say anything at any time, and he just didn't care. Um, and I could just see the face go pale of that guy when he was standing shotgun next to him when the senator would say something about Cory Booker. He'd say something about Governor Christie. And if he saw he was getting a reaction, he doubled down on it. He really, at the end, he spoke his mind, didn't he? He did, and uh, the most recent thing he just brought to mind was the uh, the infamous spanking comment about yeah. Cory Booker that, you know, Cory Booker was acting like a child and needed a spanking, and uh, that's the kind of guy he was. That's his legacy. You know, he, he would, even into his 80s, he would fight anybody, anytime. You know, he was that kind of a, kind of, you know, they talk about Governor Christie with that reputation, but Senator Lautenberg had it too. Yeah, and he liked to mix it up. Now, in terms of um, the machinations about where these things go, first, before we talk names, how, how do you think the process will play out? Um, it's in the governor's hands here. Where do you think he'll go? You know, I, was, I've been, I mean, as probably every reporter in the state, we've been talking about this all afternoon, and it's so, as you, as you said in the opening, so convoluted as to how this will actually happen. And I think you're right. It will end up in the courts. I just explored a third possibility which is in the statutes, which is that he could call a special election and it could take place in October of this coming fall. So that changes the political dynamic entirely um, from, you know, the potential for a November 2013 or November 2014 election. So it, it's just, you know, it's so convoluted. I think it's not in his best interest to have a Senate election in November, the same day he's on the ballot for governor against State Senator Barbara Buono. So I think his first choice would be November 2014. That puts his, his hand-picked choice in there for whatever it is, 16, 17 months. Has a Republican in that seat, gives somebody time to ramp up for this, uh, this election in November. I'd say his second probably choice, second, second choice would be doing this October uh, special election, which again takes it off the ballot from November, and he doesn't have to worry about whoever the Democrats put up at the top. And, it's a challenge for that seat. And I've heard two competing uh, threads here. One is, hey, he puts up Cory Booker. All of a sudden, he has Booker's got to have a record he's got to run on for the next year or so. Um, and it's a blue state, um, regardless of the governor's popularity. And the flip side is that Tom Kane Jr. or somebody else like that, he puts him up there and he gets the right off his back if he's got aspirations in 2016 for a higher office. You have any indication right now which way you think the governor would go in terms of names? I really believe it's going to be Republican. I, I don't see it, you know, a, a Cory Booker appointment or somebody else. I, I think he'll go the route of a Republican. There are a bunch of names out there. Obviously, you've got what I'd call the kind of usual suspects. You've got, the, as you mentioned, Tom Kane Jr. You've got State Senator Joe Carrillos, who ran against Bob Menendez uh, in, in the elect, general election last fall. Uh, you've got Lieutenant Governor Kim, Kim Guadano, uh, Assemblyman John Bramnick, State Senator Kevin O'Toole, all names that have sort of been kicked around. I had an interesting conversation that, this afternoon where somebody told me Tom Kane Sr. is a mm -hmm. front runner for this. Now, I think a lot would depend, A, I don't know that he'd do it, um, B, I think a lot would depend on whether or not he plans to run you know, keep somebody in place f until 2014, and, and again, whether the courts allow him or whether uh, this will be somebody up in October. I can't imagine Tom Kane accepting an appointment where he's going to run for office in October. I, I don't think he would want that, and I don't think he would do that. Another name I've heard kicked around is Bill Baroni, former state senator and now uh, deputy executive director of the Port Authority. Um, he's high up on the list as well, I think. So it, it really could come down to, you know, the governor's big on loyalty. He's big on his guys could come down to a, a decision such as that. You know, there are positives and negatives to all of these, ladies and gentlemen, um, some more than others. You know, for instance, Joe Carrillos ran a race against Bob Menendez in the fall and, and lost pretty handily. Not sure it really worked for them to put him in as the senator now after losing by 19 points, but he is also very close with the governor. Uh, he is one of, quote unquote, Christie's guys. So, you know, he's a possibility. Tom Kane Jr. has been a you know, in Republican leadership for a while, he's another uh, distinct possibility. And this political pressures from outside of New Jersey, where you have right now what will shape up to be a very interesting fight for the control of the U.S. Senate. So Republicans 
you know, if he picks somebody here that won't help or at least be a loyal red vote here, um, he's going to get some blowback for that. So no matter where this goes, this has to be a, a really tricky choice for him. The Tom Kane Sr. one, I think uh, that would get the least amount, assuming he'd do it for a year and change. Uh, statesman, everybody remembers from the 9-11 Commission, imminently respected here. Uh, you know, you could see somebody who's not going to try and make this thing a career. He'd vote his conscience on stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. I bet you that one, of all the names I've heard you say, that, that one makes the most amount of sense. Yeah, it's tough to argue with that. I mean, he's the elder statesman. He's one of the most beloved governors the state has seen. You know, huge approval ratings. He's sort of risen above that partisan sniping that you see in the state. And you're right. I, I think it would be hard for anybody to argue that he would be a good choice. I think it comes down to would he do it? Yeah. Um, does he want that on his resume for the next year? Does he, does he, you know, does he need it? I mean, this guy's done just about everything there is to do. So, you know, in, in the absence of a Tom Kane senior, you then get into that, what I would say is the second tier of people. And, you know, that's a little bit weaker bench and you've got some intriguing names on there. I personally think Baroni's kind of intriguing. Um, you know, a Guadano would be intriguing because that would change the dynamic of the gubernatorial race. And so it's it's just got huge political ramifications. I mean, it you know, it, what's unfortunately gotten lost and I you know, we, we are as much to blame as anybody is, you know, uh, Senator Lautenberg, who was a, a very well respected member of the Senate, died today. And, you know, unfortunately, this is the first question people start to ask yep. in the political circles is who's next? Who's jumping in? You know, so it's uh, mm -hmm. That, that has sort of somewhat gotten lost in our coverage and others, and, it, and I, you know, it's, it would be a shame not to point that out. You know? No, you're absolutely right. He, and uh, uh, in speaking to Governor McGreevy earlier, as well as members of the delegation, um, the one thing Lautenberg did was he did things that affected people's lives, and it wasn't just move around the political chess pieces. He cared about smoking. He cared about drunk driving. He cared about transportation. He cared about these things, and he did something about it. So... Um, as you say, this will play out on the political landscape the next few days. But, Daryl, I really appreciate a few minutes. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, everybody. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be joined by a lawmaker on the other side of the river, Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney. Talk about everything from immigration reform, student loans. Yes, those bills come and do, and your rates could double sooner than you might believe. But before we go... We'll leave you from a few words from the other senator from New Jersey, Senator Bob Menendez. When I think of uh, Senator Lautenberg, I think of the word tenacity. Frank Lautenberg was tenacious. When he had a setback, he always got right back into the game. He was tenacious in life as he was here in the Senate where that tenacity paid off for the people of New Jersey and for the nation.